YouTube Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vaynerchuk. And this, my friends, is The Thunder Show, AKA the internet's most passionate wine program. And we've gone blind city, my friends, and we've gone Zinfandel blind. It's never too early to talk about Thanksgiving. And with Zinfandel being such a big thing in the Thanksgiving world, so many people drink Zins during Thanksgiving, I figured I'd do this episode. And what's really interesting about this is this is really blind because not only are these wines blind, double blind, I have no idea what they are. Oh, that's my food. Bring it in. Not only are they double blind. Case, get in here. here. Not only are they double blind, but we don't even carry any one of these four wines. Get in here, Case. Get a little FaceTime. I'm all in here. Thank you. Case, say hello to the Vaniacs. What's going on, guys? Can Enjoy that, Doug. That's Thank you. Look at right us. There. Look at us. Michelle, zoom in on this. I mean, this is gorgeous. I'm starving. You need to push it down a little. Uh, beautiful. Thanks, Case. Gary, enjoy that. Thanks, man. It looks, wow, it looks good. What is this, like duck? A little smoked duck breast. A little warm. It's nice. Thank you. We don't carry any of these four wines. And so, it's a lot of fun for me. There's the likelihood, very high likelihood, that I've never had any of these wines. So let's get right into it. I don't know the price points. I don't know anything. Wine number one. Michelle, you don't even have to zoom in. Pretty sweet, if you ask me. Let's give this first wine a snippy sniff. Classic Zinfandel fruit coming through on the nose. Very bright um, coming through. Little uh, hints of like black currant. Let's give it a whirl. Really nice tannins coming through on the back end. I like the purity of the fruit. This is a Zinfandel that has that gorgeous roundness. Kind of interesting that I have duck here talking about Thanksgiving. A lot of people do the duck on Thanksgiving, and this is kind of going very nice. A little food and wine pairing action. Actually, I might have enough pieces of duck to do this with all of them. A um, little impromptu here. I get really beautiful strawberries coming through. There's a nice medium body aspect to this wine. It doesn't taste fake, and it's not over the top alcohol, which is always a concern with red Zinfandels. Let me give it one more whirl. Not bad. Not too much complexities, which bothers me. Really just rounded with cherry, little cassis, little back currant, a um, little pepper, but not too much. Not a bad wine. I'm gonna take a pen, hold on. Lots of weird stuff on this episode. I'm gonna guess the price points and I'm going to give it a score. Let's move on. Save it for the end. Don't fast forward. Wine number two. Let's give it a little bit of a rinse. And let's give it a pour. Now red zins have become, oh, let me keep this here. Red zins have become more and more popular with a lot of people. And they were really hot in the late 90s and then they kind of fell off in like 2002, 2003. Everybody was pushing for those Australian Shiraz wines. And they've really made a comeback. And they're a little less alcoholic this time around. Uh, they're a more refined effort, like Robert Downey Jr. So, you know, it's really kind of interesting. Now, this is a little bit lighter than I see in most Zins on the color. So that's the first thing I will evaluate. Let's give it a sniffy snip. Also, a little bit of a different taste on the nose. Maybe somebody's fooling around now with, a, you know, throwing a ringer in there. They want to laugh at me. Let's give it a... No, I think it's kind of going, you know, I get a little bit of... Like fruit punch, like sour fruit punch coming through. Almost like taking, oh, you know how you have an Arnold Palmer? Michelle, you know what an Arnold Palmer is? A half and half, 50% iced tea, 50% lemonade. You've never heard of that drink. You streamers, have you heard of an Arnold Palmer? Anyway, imagine an Arnold Palmer, but this is fruit punch, 80%, 20% lemonade. That's the kind of nose I'm getting through on this wine right here. Let's give it a whirl. I get a little cotton candy on the back end, which I think is quite interesting. Very vibrant, very racy, um, edgy. Um, really interesting little Zinfandel. It feels a little hollow on the mid palate for me. And whoa, Cliff, Cliff, 
very short finish and that's a problem. I am not a big fan of the cliff. I fear the cliff, not as much as the oak monster, but a cliff wine is always devastating and this is one. No kidding, I'm not tasting it anymore. Big disappointment. Let me go into it one more time. Weird. I've not had a cliff wine in a long time. Like really bad finish. Mm. And you know what really pisses me off is I like a lot of the uh, big man. This wine is a this is a cliff wine. This wine disappears quickly. Wow. I'm really quite disappointed in this wine actually. Um, and uh, I'm gonna guess the price point. And let's move on. I like the suspense of this show. Wine number four, weird. Wine, why don't you warn me? Wine number three. Let's give it a pour. And rinse. So this is Monday's show, but I'm taping it on Thursday, so I have no idea if that happened, but I really, really, really hope it did. Let's give this wine a sniffy sniff. Now we're talking. Let me get a little more focused. Let me get a little piece of cheese. This is very different. This is a very gamey Zinfandel. Um, I get a little venison, like you ripped a little side of a deer. Um, I get a very interesting pomegranate component. One of the more pomegranate driven red wines I've come across in a long time. I get a little char, a little smoke, a little bit like you're grilling and it comes up. Kind of interesting. Let me give it one more shot. Black tea, venison, char, pomegranate, a little bark. And that's what you're getting in here. Black cherry soda. Finishing it off. Very interesting wine. Big complexities. Really up my palate. I like the tannins. I like the tannins of the black cherries and of the tea type flavors. However, this is a wine that's very complicated and is not for everybody. It is up my alley, but beware. Buyer beware. Definitely, definitely um, not everybody's cup of tea. And finally, wine number four as I take a little bit more duck. Let's give this a snippy sniff. Now this is a big boy. This has a lot going on on the nose. Coming through with a lot of fruit. Definitely the biggest fruit bomb of the bunch. I almost get a uh, mulberry, blackberry kind of thing going on. Blueberry pie action coming through on the nose. These are all very fruit driven monsters. This is what I love about Zinfandel. They're a delicious bunch. This one's a little earthy though, kind of interesting. But I get a little, uh, you know what I get a little bit here? Goji berry. Have you had goji berries yet? Very interesting. Very interesting. Uh, good fruit from uh, China. I'm liking them. I'm coming through a little bit here on the nose with some goji berry. Mulberry too, quite a bit. Let's give it a whirl. Here are the alcohols coming through a little bit more. It's a big boy. It's got real high tannin structure. There's a little bit more of like the, not the turly like Martinelli like over the top, but definitely a big monster. Good fruit, good structure, hot, but under control a little bit, which I like. But this is a fruit bomb. And that is something you have to recognize. There's a crap load of fruit coming on, exploding in my mouth. Blackberries, blueberries, strawberries, red and dark fruits coming through on my mouth. Completely coating. There's a little, ah, 
oak monster in there as well. So you just have to know what you're getting yourself into. Also, very good wine, rivals the last wine, a little bit less up my alley, but um, a wine that I think a lot of people could get into. So let me rate them. And that's how I rank them. Let's see what they are. In last place, with a score of a 78, a wine that I predict, or let me rephrase that, a wine that I think is worth $10 and is probably a $10 wine, let's see what's going on. Barossa 2005 Zinfandel from Napa Valley. This wine is 24 US dollars and uh, and, uh, comes from Barossa, 1100 cases made. I didn't love it. Definitely the weakest of the bunch. I'm sorry. I love, love the people at Barossa. That sucked. That's not, did I just nail that? Yes, you did. That was pretty sweet, right? I'm on fire with that. I already showed him I've done that before. Double instruction, double blind. Do you see that with the defense? In second to last place, with an 87 plus point score at 15 bones, very serviceable if it's in that price range, is, not quite, uh, Adobe Road 2005 Zinfandel from Sonoma, 15.2 alcohol, kept its alcohol in, under control. I'm pretty impressed with that. Only 950 cases made, 30 US dollars. Kevin and Deborah Buckler, who I'm a big fan of actually, but uh, unfortunately, you know, 87 plus, good wine, good wine, but I don't think for me worth the price point. Let's move on. In second place, 30 US dollars, 89 points is what I have it at is a 90 point Robert Parker $50 red Zinfandel from Lodi called Lust from Michael and David from Lodi. Um, I like this, I went 89 plus, um, Parker went 90. Um, I had it more as a $30 wine, they had it at the $50 price range, so I do think it's a little overpriced. So unfortunately, Blind Zinfandel is not going so well. I would really say we're 0 for 3 at some level, though the Lust showed a lot of potential. And finally, the one that I like the most, I predict at a $25 price point, I went 90 plus points, even feel like a 91 actually is where I should have went. Wine number three, 44 US, God these wines got expensive, 44 US dollars, um, Aqua Dolce, uh, Aeneas Reserve, 2003 vintage, had a little of that, see I like the funky little old world, 13.8% alcohol, little age, 44 bones um, from Los Angeles. How about that? Los Angeles County, old school. I actually visited this winery for a documentary. Is that right? Is this what? Unbelievable. Definitely from the place that makes the least quality wines in people's opinion. Los Angeles County, somewhere where you never expect no, the scene is just starting to grow, but if you take it old school, 1800s, pre-prohibition, a very major player. Places where like Mondavi started. So this is actually turning out to be a pretty epic episode, a little throwback to where they used to make great wines. I'm excited, I still think it's overpriced because I thought it should be a $25 wine, but it was great nonetheless. But I would be honest with you, a very, brutal day. Um, I thought two of the wines were very good. I did not expect these price points. There's no Euro in California, folks. Question of the day. What is your favorite Zinfandel? Because you, with a little bit of me, we're changing the wine world, whether they like it or not.